Good morning, everyone. Um, and as she says, I'm going to give a little bit of a background to um, the web project to talk about what we've been doing for the past 12 months, um, but also most importantly to show you um, to show you what we've um, what we've got, what the future website will look like. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we are hosting this webinar, which is the Ngunnawal people, um, and the lands on which you um, might be watching this webinar from. Um, I wish to acknowledge and show my respects for um, the elders past, present and emerging. And I'd also like to acknowledge any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people um, involved in today's webinar. Uh, so I'm just gonna give you a little bit of um, an overview of the vision the benefits of the project, what are some of the key challenges, um, and most importantly, the changes, um, and then show you a demonstration of the website um, as it is today, uh, and then also um, give you some mechanisms for providing feedback, because once the website goes live, um, we wanna continue hearing from users of the website and how we can keep improving it, because the website, after all, should be a living thing. So just for some context, um, our website um, is, has seen a significant amount of change. Um, so in the past 12 months, 42 million page views. So there's, there's been 42 million page views of the TGA website. Um, that's a, more than a 300% increase from before the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and that's largely been um, as a result of consumers. So the, the nature of the TGA website has changed. So we need to make sure that we are changing with that. Um, interestingly, about 83% of our users are new, um, only about 17% are returning for the past 12 months. Um, so for a lot of people, when they see the new website, that will be the first time they've seen the website, they won't know any different. But there is still a cohort of people who will have had experience using the website, um, and for them this will be different. Um, about 50% of um, visits come from Australia, um, but there is a significant number from overseas. So we have about 27% from the United States and about 17% from Great Britain. Um, so it is uh, also an international website. It isn't just for Australians, it is accessed by, from a number of different countries. Um, okay, so the vision, what are we trying to do? We're trying to create a seamless user-friendly experience um, for everyone, basically but also a website that's easier for us to maintain. Um, so we continue to, to make it meet your needs. We want it to be a modern um, entry point to the TGA. For many people, this will, the website will be the only experience they have of dealing with the TGA. So we need the website to, to work as expected. We need it to, to create a sense of trust and confidence in the content that we have. And, and also for people to be able to ac um, easily access services that the website links to. We have been working with our delivery partners, Folk and Morphed, um, to make this website come to life. And then, as I said, it has been taking us 12 months um, of hard work to get here. Uh, we're also delivering some broader transformation program objectives, and that is about reducing the regulatory burden. We wanna make it easier for you to do business and also to um, make it easier for people to find the information that they're looking for. So the reasons for change, um, as I said before, our audience has changed. Um, we have a much broader audience now um, using the TGA website and there's different maturity levels and different expectations. Um, so in the last 12 months, we've had 12.7 million people visit the TGA website, um, which is very different from pre-COVID. So we need to make sure that this, this website is meeting people's needs today. Um, it's hard to use and it's hard to manage. So it's a large amount of content on the website, um, which means it's very hard to find information, um, but also it makes it very hard to, to maintain the website from, from a back-end perspective as well. But interestingly, um, what we found from our analytics is about 150 pages are accessed from about a third of our website traffic. So we know if we can make improvements to some of these pages quickly, then we're going to be actually helping quite a large number of people. The volume of inquiries. So we do also know from inquiry numbers that at the moment about 40% of our inquiries are a result of the website, not, um, not meeting expectations and not giving the information that people need. Um, so this gives us an, an amazing opportunity. We can fix the website and hopefully have people's questions answered 
early and quickly and then they can get on with what they want to do. Um, also, we've got inconsistencies. So there's lots of complex data repositories, siloed content. Um, there isn't a lot of connected information which is impacting the customer experience or the user experience. What we want to do is make sure this website is easy to use and that it has the trust and confidence that you would expect um, from a regulator. So we haven't just done this in isolation. We've actually engaged with a large number of people. Um, we've been using, um, well, our delivery partners spoke, have been using a human-centred design approach, which means from very early on, we went out broad through discovery. We talked to as many people as we could across many different groups to understand um, not only just the pain points, but what are the opportunities? What can we build and make this website do to better meet your needs? Um, so as it says there, more than 1,500 people um, and we had fantastic response to simple things like an online survey. We had great feedback. So we're pretty confident that what we've built is actually based on solid evidence and, and what you want. So the key themes for our project, um, search and findability. We want to make it simple and easy to find information. We want structured content. We want there to, there needs to be a clear um, reason and layout for content so that you can find it easily and that the content is then layered and, and the language is clear. Consistent experiences and consolidated data. So we want to make sure that the experience that you have on the TDA website is consistent with other experiences on other um, health websites. We've been working with the health.gov.au team as well to make sure that there is a consistent broader department approach to our websites so that the patterns are consistent and familiar. Um, again, building trust. Consolidating data, we want to make sure that um, all the different data that we have on our website um, is actually brought together in context so that you can understand um, how different pieces of content, different pieces of data relate to one another. Let the system do the work, not the user. Um, and also, again, it's about um, a sense of authority. You know, we want to make sure that our information is current um, and we want to make sure that the TGA proposition, what, what our website is here for, and, and make sure it's delivering that. Um, so what we're doing is actually um, changing not only just all the structure, but also the way it looks. So we're aligning it to the broader health design system so it will look like other websites in the health portfolio again, to make sure that, consist that experience is consistent. But most of all, we want to make sure it's mobile responsive so that no matter what device you're on, you can access the information that you need. However, um, like with any very large project, there are always going to be challenges. Um, and we're doing everything that we can to reduce those. But um, it is important to note that there will be, for some people who know the current website, there will be an element of relearning. So we're trying to do as much as we can to make information available to help with the transition to the new website. There may be some broken links, um, but we're doing a huge amount of link checking so that we can have redirects in place to minimise that. Um, there has been a large amount of content archived. Um, in order to improve the content, we need to archive a lot of it because we realised that there was some older content there. Um, and along, along with most government departments, our um, archiving approach um, is Trove, which is the National Library of Australia archive. Um, and you can go onto Trove and find any um, historic content um, of a website. Uh, and I think our TGA website goes back to 2003 on Trove. Um, so what we're doing is we're making sure that the experience between Trove and our website is good. And so any content that is serial, so for example, media releases, news, recalls, committees, um, that there will be a link off to Trove so that you can go and find um, older content on there um, if that's what you're looking for. But again, focusing the website back on what its purpose is, which is to provide current and timely information about the regulation of therapeutic goods in Australia. Um, so this was a big task. <laughs> it's the largest content project I've ever worked on. Um, so we migrated, um, there we go, 112,000 items of content. Um, it was a huge um, uh, Tetris game, um, matching all the content across from the current site to the, to the future site. Um, but I'm pretty impressed with what we've done and I'm sure you will be as well.
So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to give you a look at what our um, website looks like so that you can sort of see what to expect. The caveat being obviously it is a development site um, so you will see things like test um, and there will be content that isn't correct because we are still working on that. Um, but what I'm demonstrating today is the functionality, the overall structure so that you get an idea of what to expect when we launch. Um, so similar to the broader department's um, website, we are taking a topic-based approach. Um, we are not taking an audience-based approach. And the main reason for that is because in discovery we heard that um, it was very confusing to people because people could be multiple audiences and it wasn't clear when they needed to use which piece of content. Um, so we've stripped it right back and focused on the task. Um, the top navigation is quite simple, um, products we regulate, which is literally the what. What is it that we regulate? Product safety is around um, sort of consumer health professional content. It's really around how do I report a problem? Um, what do I do if there's a recall of, of my product? Um, all the information that talks about our monitoring programs um, for um, users of therapeutic goods. How we regulate is really the bulk of the content about how to apply. And that is what we largely think industry will use. Um, all of the instructions from start to finish about um, applying for a therapeutic good. Um, guidance and resources is a section where we've pulled together um, all of the disparate information across the current website into one central place. Um, so we hope that it's actually easier to find things quickly um, to get access to data, um, databases, data sets, publications, resources, um, and it's easy as it's in one spot. Then we've also got news and community and about us, which is the standard, um, standard uh, content you would expect, but it's secondary content for the tasks that people are, are coming to our website for. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just show you into how we regulate and just a little bit of the structure that we've been working on. Again, this is in development, so there will be things that aren't 100%. What we've tried to do across each of the therapeutic goods is um, maintain consistency. So for a lot of things, there are actually um, very similar patterns. Uh, there are some uh, niche parts of therapeutic goods. But where there's something similar, we've tried to, to map that out. Um, content that crosses, that cuts across all of the therapeutic goods, we've put in one place. So for example, manufacturing, advertising, compliance. Um, and rather than duplicate it, we're going to be pointing to that content so that we can make sure that the content is, is published in one place, but available in many. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just show you the difference between they are medical device and, and prescription medicines. And I will say this, the, the structure may change for, la, for launch, but it will give you an idea. Um, so in medical devices, we have you know, types of medical devices, classifying what classification your device is. So kind of all that introductory information. Um, manufacturing evidence, what you need to understand about label and labeling and packaging, what you need for your application, what are your ongoing responsibilities in managing your therapeutic good? And then how might you vary it? Now, if I scroll down here to prescription medicines, you'll see a similar pattern. So not, a, not identical, but it's a similar flow. So that you'll have, again, an, the application um, process, so the overview of the application, um, the different application types, what you need for your pre-submission planning, um, what you need to actually um, submit your application for your dossier, what the TGA does with that, so what we do with your application, and again, your ongoing responsibilities and how you might vary it. So we're trying to keep a consistent flow across the therapeutic goods um, rather than duplicating content. What I'll do as well is show you in guidance and resources. Um, so guidance and resources is, as I said before, sort of a uh, pulling together of all the things that um, are kind of high volume or, or at things that you need to access from the website. So you can quickly get access to the ARTG, the safety alerts, shortages, access to portals. Um, we've got things like you can easily see the resources from here, publications, or you can get access to all our databases and data sets. 
Um, so in here, you'll be able to actually see um, a list of all of the data sets that we have across the website at the moment in one place. Um, and I'll just scroll down so you can see them all. So everything is now in one place. The other thing that we've done with the website is linked data. Um, so where there is an ARTG, where there's an ARTG number or there's a sponsor, um, we've actually connected that information so that it will display for you other relevant content um, that you can't currently access on the website. And I'll show you what I mean um, now. So I will do a search um, here. If I do a search for oxycodone, what you'll see is all the results um, relevant to the term oxycodone. Um, down the side, you'll see there are annual charge exemptions, there's ARTG entries, there's section 14 consents, there's, there's every single type of content um, that you can access from here. So you can actually filter it down for what you might be looking for. You can also filter by topic. So you might say, okay, I'm looking for advertising information or I'm looking for information around medicine safety. We are also tagging some content where it's specifically relevant to an audience. So in this example, there's something here that's been tagged for health professionals. Um, so you can search and filter by audience if it's available. What I'll do is I'll go in here and show you as well um, the, is the OSPA for um, this particular, for oxycodone. And um, so you can see all the information about that. The other thing we've done as well is LinkedIn sponsor. Um, so what you can do is actually click on a sponsor and that will show you everything that we have relevant to that particular sponsor. So here you can see the ARTG entries, the cancellations, the OSPARs, lab testing reports, um, any registrations, anything we might have relevant to that particular sponsor and then the, the date. So as I said before, we're starting to pull content together um, so that the website is doing the work and, and not the user. If I open up another entry, this is an annual charge exemption. Um, so you can see information about that. And again, it relates back to an ARTG entry. So you can click on that and then see the ARTG entry. You can see here, there's a related annual charge exemption. So if I access this information straight from the ARTG search, it would show me the other information that's relevant to this particular entry. Again, the website doing the work and not the user. All right, so what I will show you as well is the resources, um, which is available from guidance and resources. Um, so what you can do here is you can actually come and filter uh, to, to a particular topic uh, or a particular audience. I'm going to filter and say I'm only looking for resources relevant to medical devices. And here we go, we can see currently I've got um, 79 types of guidance and 11 forms. So, okay, I only want guidance relevant to medical devices. And the resources are being filtered even more. Now I see 79 results and I can search through or I can type in a search term that I'm looking for and find the guidance that I need. Um, this just makes access to information a lot easier. We've also done the same with publications. Um, so if you're looking for a particular publication, um, so for example, you want to access all the final scheduling decisions, you can click on that and then you will see all of those um, available here. And then you can search and filter for what you're looking for. Or you can say, I want to look for something around um, medicinal cannabis and it will show you the scheduling decisions around medicinal cannabis. Um, finally, uh, news and community. So this is where all of the typical news content will be. Um, so access to news, media releases, product recalls, safety updates, notices, um, all of our events and consultations will be here, as well as our blog. Um, all of the standard news content will sit here. The other really exciting thing about the website, new website, is that we have now started connecting committees 
with decisions with events. So you can see a committee, you can see a committee meeting, you can see the outcomes of those committee meetings, which might be a publication um, or a scheduling decision. And there's now relationships between all of those. So like we can relate a news item to a topic, we can actually start to connect committees and their meetings and the decisions. Um, so again, we're getting the system to do the work and showing you the information rather than you having to go and find it. So I'll stop sharing my screen now. So that's a little insight into what our website um, will look like, um, how it will function. Um, we do have a bit of work to do uh, and doing the final, um, the, sort of the icing on the cake really, the final touches um, and um, connecting up the content into the structure. Um, but I think you'll see that we have made significant uh, improvements from the current website. And as I said earlier, for us, really fundamental to this is hearing your feedback. We want to know what's working for you and what's most importantly not working so we can fix it quickly. At the bottom of every page, there's actually a link that says, is there anything wrong with this page? It's the same as the, the main department's health.gov.au website. Um, you can click on that, simply fill out um, what you were trying to do, what was wrong, submit, it'll come to my team and we can fix that and, and action it. Also, um, at the bottom in the footer, um, there's a provide feedback button. So we really want to hear, we want to have, we want to hear your feedback um, so that we can continuously improve the website. We are creating resources and we will be publishing those on the current website and sharing them through social media. Again, just to help with the transition to the new website. And obviously, if you have a really complex question and you need support, then we have our um, TGA contact centre that you can call. Um, and the team is doing a lot of work in providing resources to the contact centre to help them in the transition to the new website so they can support you better. Thank you, everyone. We've got some really great questions coming through. So the first one from Pam is, will the next training scheduled be exactly like this training or will more information be shared? Um, so the next one will be um, the same as this one. However, if there is more information that people uh, need, I'm happy to hear that and we can um, look at what we can do. Excellent. So the next one's from Janice. Hello, will the new website have a large amount of grey font like the demo? Black is much easier on the eyes. Um, so we have modelled our um, designs from the health design system. So we are we are um, kind of locked into a certain design um, to make our website ex experience consistent. But also we have tested this. Um, so we've done series, a series of tests and it's all been quite positive. So what you're seeing is, is what it will be, but it won't be as grey because there will be more colour. We've got to add that yet. I've got a question from Jen. Are you implementing redirects from old pages to new pages? Just wondering about broken links. Yes, so we are. Um, we are. We've done at least six iterations of link testing to make sure that we um, links won't be broken. Um, so we think we've got most of them. There may be still some broken. So if some aren't working, um, then please let us know, um, and we can have a look at that. I have a question about TGA EBS. Is there a difference? Yes. Yes, there is. Um, so the TGA website is is information. Um, eBiz is the transactional portal. Uh, there is a separate project um, that is uh, underway looking at uh, modernising the transactional portal, um, but this is purely information. I have a question about ARTG search mechanism. Is there a link to the ARTG public entry? Yes. Yeah, so, um, all of the publicly available information has actually um, been essentially ingested into the website, so it's displayed. Um, so we will be able to display decision summaries as well as any um, product information and consumer uh, medicine information will be available as well um, where, it, where it relates to the product. We've had a couple of questions about the launch date. What's the target date? <laughs> um, look, I'm hoping for early August, but we don't have an exact date yet because um, there are a few moving parts in the background with our um, Department of Finance colleagues for GovCMS, so we just have to uh, 
we won't really know um, yet when we can announce a launch date, but hopefully early August. I have another question. Um, thank you. They're all coming in quite quickly, which is great. Will the prior ARGMD be moved to Trove, given that it's still under review? Um, so the majority of our content won't be um, rewritten for this launch. As you can imagine, there's a huge amount of content. So we're moving over content um, that is on the current site and, and mapping it into the new structure. Once the website is launched, um, then is actually the bulk of the work, which is the content rewrite. So then we'll be looking at all the content. Um, all that content that's been archived is very old content. So we aren't archiving anything unless it is clearly no longer um, relevant or it's completely out of date. So um, all the guidance that's currently on the site, that it, if it's being used and it's, it's um, needed, we, it will be transferred across to the new site. Great. A question about why are ACE reports published? Are they not considered private to the sponsor? Um, it's publicly available on our website at the moment. So I don't know the answer to that. That's um, probably a question I'll have to take on notice. Okay, that's great. Where do we go to sign up to an email list? Um, so there are subscription lists on our website now, um, ones you can subscribe to, and there isn't one for the web project specifically, but um, if there's any information that you'd like to know, then um, please uh, use the email address provided, which I think was the, the TGA Transformation Program email address, and we can keep you informed. We can put that one back up, I think, or add that one back in, Nishi. I've just posted that on bro uh, broadcasted that. Thank you. Thank That's you. Okay. I have a question about um, at which stage of accessing the new website will a login and password be required? Um, there won't be a login and password for it's a public website with available information. Um, there will obviously with the um, improvements to the trans uh, the transactional portal that that will come but this website there is no login needed great will the older guidance material be retained on the new website or just the latest version um so if the older guidance you mean it's been superseded by something else no it won't it, we are looking to archive it it may not be archived now um but it's certainly as part of the content rewrite any guidance that is superseded and is no longer current um, will be archived. Great. We've had a few emails about the RS, um, sorry, RSS feed email notifications. Will they stay as they are or do we need to re-register -re for those? Um, so another part of our project um, is look improving our notifications and subscriptions. Um, so there will be, it won't be available for launch, but soon after launch, we will have a new, um, a new system to support that uh, and uh, we'll have new options for subscriptions and notifications. So we'll let people know as soon as that's available and you can have a look at what you'd like to subscribe to. But there will need to be new, um, new subs you, you will need to add your details again for privacy reasons. We have a suggestion from Nav. Have you thought about a bot for frequently asked questions? <laughs> now that's a great uh, question. Um, yes, we have. Um, but uh, as you can appreciate that we are trying to um, fix the foundations for the website so that we have a really good, uh, really solid base from which to build further enhancements. So this launch is really about getting back to basics, improving the structure and the findability of content. Um, and then we have a plan, Horizon 2 and Horizon 3, to make in continuous improvements. And one of those is to explore um, a virtual assistant, a chatbot, whatever you want to call it, uh, definitely to find and, and make access to, to simple um, answers easier. 
Great. We've got a question about will the new website include a section on AAN versus other INCI's technical or common aspects for individual ingredients? Um, I am not a technical person, so I don't know what those acronyms mean <laughs> for. I'm really sorry. Um, I don't know if anyone um, from my team wants to jump in and answer that. Otherwise, I'm happy to take that on notice. If it's currently available in our website, um, then it definitely will be. Otherwise, I can come back to you with an answer to that question. Only adding in here that um, AN is an Australian approved name. So it's the Australian approved name for ingredients. Um, I think some of this information is already on our current website. Um, and yes, if it's on, like Claire said, if it's on our current website, it's definitely going to be on the, the new one. We've got a question about guidance. Many historical guidance located on the website does create confusion. Which one will be removed? Sorry, I'm not. Sorry, what was that one? Can you repeat the question? Yes, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, many historical guidance located on the TGA website creates confusion. Will these be removed? Um, yes, so um, similar to my answer before, when we review all the content, um, we will be archiving the old version. So if it's been superseded, there is a new version of it, we'll only be retaining the most up-to-date version and all the previous versions will be archived. Um, we want to make sure that the content on the website um, is, is, is timely, accurate and relevant uh, and we want to remove all the the old content that might be confusing people. So, yes, we will be removing it. Claire, in relation to committee reports being available, will items such as outcomes from reviews from the ACMD be published? Um, I'm not actually sure. Um, uh, Basically, if there is a if there is a working group or there is a committee, and then there is an outcome from that, they, they and they it can be a published, publicly available outcome, um, then it will be. Uh, it might be a question I need to take on notice and talk to um, medical device team. But I suspect that if it's if it can be publicly available, we will publish it. Great. Will there be any change in application forms for OTC, RX, or complementary? No, um, so this, again, the website is about the information, so we won't be changing any of the forms or anything relating to the application process. Um, we're changing, improving the information um, and then the access to those things. So um, that will be captured as part of the improvement and enhancements to the, the transactional, so the eBiz improvements. Thanks, Claire. If there is a guideline update, will it be easy to see on the website? Currently, it's on the landing page. Um, so, yes, the answer is yes. Um, what we're trying to do is, um, because at the moment it's, it's quite confusing to people, what is the most current version, because there are multiple versions. Um, because uh, the content will be accessed via the filters I showed you with the publications, um, the version that you should find on there should be the only version. Um, if there is a, an announcement about a change to a guidance, then we will make that available via the website like we currently do. Um, also, uh, as I said before, we're looking at improving the notifications and subscriptions. So we're looking at, at doing more push communication so that we can notify people um, earlier about changes. Thanks, Claire. We've just got two more questions to go. For the project updating the e-business section, will you also consult with industry for feedback on improvements? Um, yes, so there, the project has been. So similar to the way this project's been run, um, they followed a human-centred design approach to, to identify the experience um, or the preferred experience. Um, so they've done a whole bunch of discovery um, so, yes, they are um, making sure the user experience uh, and feedback from users is fundamental to that. But I'm sure you'll hear more about that soon. Thanks, Claire. So, we've got the last question here. So, in the new website, where are the webinar and training materials located? So, that will be all under news and community. 
So everything about events and um, all webinars will be accessed via the news and community section. Great. Excellent. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time today. Um, if you do have any further questions, please email um, the email address in, in the, the, the Q&A there, the um, tgatp at health.gov.au, um, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, some of the questions that I've taken on notice, we'll get answers to those and put them up on our website so you can find, find them there. Um, but thank you once again for today. Um, and next week's session will be similar to, to this week's session. Hope you all have a lovely afternoon.